hello and welcome to let me bore you to sleep dot com that's right the website is back uh, this is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Um, that's it, really. Uh, I'm recording this as you probably aware I record these at different times of the day different times of the night you know it depends I would have done it last night or before I went to bed so I went to bed about five and uh, but I recorded two recordings I made two recordings uh, one was the deep what was it Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, which I do every Friday. That's a, a different podcast. That's what was that? Sleep, yeah, I think that's sleephypnosisweekly.com. So I did a long one, it's about a six, 63 minutes or something. Uh, and I was quite pleased, if I'm honest with you, I was quite pleased with that one. I did, uh, yeah, I did pat myself on the knee for that. Can't reach me back. So I thought, yeah, that was quite good. I'm not going to stop saying how good it is, but yeah, it's just worth a listen. Um, and I did a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recorded as well last night or early hours of the morning and that was quite long as well that was about 36 minutes long normally they're about 20 minutes ish and I was quite pleased with that one as well but I was a little bit too tired to make a new one on top of that a three in a row is I have done it don't normally do that but it was a bit you know so it's now 12.30 in the afternoon or is it later I don't know let's have a look no it's two minutes past 1pm in the afternoon Saturday whatever day this is and I just got up about half hour well, 20 minutes ago uh, uh, I'm ready to go back to bed but I thought no thing is I have uh, a stomach I have to take a stomach tablet f uh, like an anti-acid tablet thing uh, an hour before I eat my breakfast although I've got muesli so I'm not really that bothered about eating my breakfast but hey, it's all part of the healthy 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 lifestyle that I'm going to be leading muesli I wanted to get some Alpen because the Alpen's muesli is lovely but probably because it's full of sugar possibly I don't know it, they do they do one without sugar or one with reduced sugar, but I like the original one. That would it's, it's sweet, so I'm guessing it's got sugar, but it's not definite. Please don't sue me, Mister Alpen. Um, but it does taste sweet, and it's beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, especially like with with too much milk. You know when you got too much milk, and it just soaks it and it gets all soggy oh it's nice it's a bit like with Weetabix Weetabix are quite 
I don't know, they're like life, lifeboats. They're not easy to sink. I don't mean like they float on the top. They just, they stay hard for too long until they don't. It's like they're hard and then if you cover them, if you put enough water, milk, not water, you could have water but that would be disgusting, uh, milk in the bowl with the Weetabix, it gets to a point where they're instantly soggy. So there's, there's no, there's no warning. It's like having a meal that's absolutely scalding hot, and the waiter says, "Mander your feet, not not feet. Mander your hands. the The bowl is a hot." And they put it down, and then a second they take the lid off. Because it's one of those meals with a lid. And. They take the lid off. And it's freezing cold. You know. It's something that just turns that quickly. And I've been in a few relationships. That have done that to be fair. I love you. Not anymore. <laughs> I love you. I'm not sure how I feel about you. Yeah, but you said I love you yesterday. But I don't know how I feel about you now. But let's work it out. That was yesterday at 11am. Well, no, it's no, it 2pm. And now this is... Eight o'clock in the morning. Let's work it out. Eleven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's ten hours to midnight, plus another eight hours. So in eighteen hours, you've gone from loving me to not really being sure about me. Ooh, you know, it's, what's happened in the last 18 hours? I actually had that happen to me. I shouldn't really... I was on a hypnosis course. So I'd started dating this... Well, not started, but I'd been with her for a little while. And she was... And I... I'd, I booked a hypnosis course and I was going away for the weekend. Not going away, but just travelling up to London and back on the day. And I don't know. Maybe she thought I was cheating on her, but I don't cheat. I'm way too lazy for that. I don't even attempt to please one woman. Why would I try to please more than one? It's, you know, it's... I'm I'm too lazy. I just can't be bothered cheating. What's the point? I mean, I don't understand why men cheat or women cheat. You'd think after, if you get to the point where you don't want to, when you just like can't stand the sight of someone. So if I let's say, um, if you're a woman and you're with a man that you can't stand the sight of. Why would you think to yourself, oh, I've got to get myself another man? Why would you want to be with another one? Surely you'd want a break. Just a rest. I've got a friend and she cannot stand being alone. She just hasn't, she will not be on her own. She will choose a partner. A new boyfriend slash husband or whatever he's going to be long before the other relationship ends will not be alone. And some people are like that, some people don't want to be alone. Alone, on your own, alone. 
Yeah, maybe that is it, isn't it? They want to be on their own, but they associate that with being alone, feeling alone, all alone. It's like an emotional, isn't it? I'm so alone. I know what. I'd prefer to be single for the rest of my life than be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't like me. You know, I think that's right. Well, I've done 11 minutes. This was the introduction. This isn't the actual recording. I don't know how I got onto that subject. So if you do fancy listening to me being a bit more sensible and a bit more professional, well, I'm not in the least bit professional in these recordings, so... There is no professionalism. But if you do fancy hearing me in a kind of a a, profe- a semi-professional mode, uh, then maybe listen to, listen to Deep Sleep Whispers or the weekly sleep hypnosis. And you've got a choice of a thousand others as well. There's lots of different stuff that I've done. Um yeah, so that's that's the introduction. This is just me talking about stuff. And it will all be boring. It's, you know, it's boring. And it's supposed to be boring. I try and keep it light, you know. And some DJ or some radio podcast... Uh, reviewer podcast reviewer reviewed a one of my podcasts and there's lots to choose from it wasn't just the, the sleep hypnosis stuff but it happened to be a let me bore you to sleep at the top of the list that was like the the latest one that I'd done. And he just ripped me to bits. He really wasn't happy. And um, he was saying that I'd copied and all this stuff. But the thing that got me most is he was saying that it was depressing. And... That's kind of the last thing I want it to be. I want it to be boring. If being bored is depressing, then my suggestion is don't listen to this. God, the idea of causing emotional harm to someone through talking complete rubbish really would upset me. So please don't. And how, you know, I, I, it's not my intention. So, if if you listen and it, you don't like what you hear, don't listen. And don't listen again. Find some something else to listen to. There's loads of stuff out there. I say stuff jokingly, messing around. Sometimes I say serious things, but it's all kind of underpinned with a levity and a lightness I hope maybe my tone of voice doesn't give the correct thing maybe because it's quite slow and it's quite low and it's quite uh, perhaps doesn't hasn't got the the uh, comedy timing that you would uh, appreciate But it's just the way that I do things. It's just how I am. So 
so uh, I'd really appreciate it if if for any reason you know you don't this doesn't you know you, you don't get what you need then look elsewhere because there's, there's going to be something out there you know never give up looking for something to help you to sleep don't give up on that because sleeping is too important and yeah I'm being really serious now it's way too important to give up and if, if you're like me and probably loads of other people we bullshit ourselves you know you ever get into conversation with someone you tell them that you got a or oh, I have trouble sleeping well if you tried this I've always got a, I've always got a suggestion even people that don't care like oh have you tried this and the amount of times that it's different things for me it could be mood issues it could be I got a bad leg or if you if you tried this you know even if you got a common cold have you tried echinacea so we, let's start with something that I can spell first and it's like well have you tried this have you and the amount of times I've said I've tried everything when the truth is I haven't tried what they suggested but I'm annoyed with them I'm, anno- I'm annoyed with them suggesting something which is actually a kind thing for them to do it's quite a personal thing I think some people they do they're not personally involved in the conversation it's like have you tried an aspirin I've heard aspirins are good can we now talk about trains you know they're perhaps they're not quite as involved in the conversation so what they suggest may not be a personally friendly or nice thing but a lot of people will give you try and help you with something that's helped them I mean just like if someone has a headache there's lots of different things you can do um, I've got lots of different ways of I can reduce your headache but it could be by talking to you sometimes taking medication you know I've like I, I'm pretty good at self hypnosis when it comes to physical pain when it comes to uh, being able to relax myself generally there are times when I struggle you know I've got bipolar and it's powerful Sometimes it's it's too powerful for me to combat against, if that makes sense. Uh, because I need my mind to do it, and it's my mind that's to do it. If that if that makes any sense, and it's like a battle that I just it's just me against my entire mind, and I'm trying to get my mind on my side, and it's it's just not always easy, but. I have managed to do that as well in the throes of a panic attack I've managed to calm myself down um, and I've managed to lots of stop smoking using hypnosis I've done different things now this wasn't supposed to be a bragging session oh yeah there, there, there was a point okay but here's something I've done a few times sometimes I won't quit I won't give up Uh, which is a good thing sometimes a lot of times it can be an amazing thing yeah let's face it if you're stuck in a lifeboat 
and you're unable to you know really move because you're not well you want the person that's with you to never give up rowing you know you you want that that kind of person that's never going to give up which means that you can lay down and just rest maybe watch a, watch some Netflix or whatever and you know that you're going to get somewhere eventually but so I can be a little bit like that sometimes when it comes to headaches other pains in my body I can deal with I do take pain medication um, but I can deal with the niggles the niggles of being a middle aged man and maybe women have it too but I'm a man, I'm not a woman and I'm not talking for other men either I'm just talking okay I should really change it the niggles of being in a middle aged Jason but then does that mean I'm talking for other Jasons no I'm not okay I am all Jasons embrace and become as one But when it comes to my head, headaches, I know that I can reduce a headache, I can get rid of it. Sometimes it's as simple as just going to sleep. You know, laying down, resting my eyes, going to sleep. And I don't get headaches very often. It's quite a rarity. And I don't get bad headaches that, that just last. It's rare, and they're not they're not migraine levels. I used to get migraines when I was a, a lot younger, but luckily I don't anymore. Thankfully, wow. So this is I will actually, and this is ridiculous. I will stay in bed, waiting for the headache to go. And I get up, and the headache's still there, and I'll go back to bed. And I'll spend the entire day in bed, waiting for the headache to go. I've done this for two days sometimes. Two whole days where I've had a headache. And nearly every time I give in, and I take some you know, headache tablets specifically for your headache and the headache's gone within about 10 minutes or 15, 20 minutes so I've wasted two days out of pride and quite often I don't even attempt any kind of hypnosis I just lay down because my headache should go by sleeping because that's kind of the natural process of things with me. I find it ironic, <laughs> very, very ironic, that one of the symptoms of stopping taking painkillers is a headache, or can be a headache. you need painkillers to get rid of the headache it's just do you know what I mean it's like uh, I suppose it's it would be like one of the symptoms of uh, the female menopause is to get pregnant you know that that's, that would be not ironic but you know, the silliness of, of it. It's, you know, not that getting pregnant is silly. It's a wonderful, it's magic. It is the most magical thing in the universe. But we're talking about headaches. We're talking about headaches, yes we are. 
No, we're not. I mean, I was. It's gone now. With the amount of times that people have said to me, "Oh, have you have you tried this? It's a it's a very good thing." And all you do is you run out to sea, you know, just to the edge. You don't actually run out to sea, but you, you, you paddle, you have your feet unwrapped. And then you just, whenever the tide comes in like a wave, you scream and you, like a seagull, like a seagull. And you, and you run back up the beach try to avoid the water getting too high and touching touching your le- you know your, your trousers my nan she used to go paddling and she called it paddling so basically she used to do her trousers up or I don't know, did she wear trousers? God, maybe she was a man. <laughs> she, 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 I don't know. Or she, she used to roll something up. I'm pretty sure. And uh, she'd take her shoes off. Wasn't wearing socks. Yeah, so she must have been a woman. Females, because females don't wear socks, do they? And they all have long hair, and what other things? Oh, they all like pink, the colour pink, not the singer pink. Because singer pink, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a. I think the singer pink's a man. I think there's an irony with the thing. I think it's... Was she, is she a lady? I can't remember. I'm not up to date on my music. Ever since Beethoven died, I've kind of... You know, I've kind of lost track. I, I, I've lost track. Um... Be let could rename this. To let me talk rubbish for no reason. Yes, I could, couldn't I? Went to the doctors yesterday. Again, maybe I shouldn't mention doctors. Oh, what I was going to say is there are ways to get rid of a headache or to relieve tension. And you can listen to hypnosis, and it's great. Or listen to me just reverting on and stuff. And it's very relaxing. But you know what I like? Probably more than anything. I could have, I'm just being serious. Here. What I like... If it's a big bath, I like a bath. But my bath's not big enough for me to stretch out in it. I'm only five for eight, but the baths, you know, eventually I'm going to be able to, I'm going to get myself a big bath, even if it means putting it in my living room. Seriously, I'm just going to get a big bath, a good, you know, seven foot bath. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be lovely. Maybe 10 foot. Maybe a jacuzzi. Basically a jacuzzi is just a bath with bubbles, isn't it? So it's... I wouldn't want to share a jacuzzi with... I was going to say with other people. But in reality it's probably just other men. I think it was... If it was full of women, I'd probably. That's technically, that's you could say well, that's very sexist. It's not. It's sexy. There's a difference. It's 
sexy because I'll be there it's not sexy because of the women there that would be sexist to say it's sexy because of all the lovely ladies that are in the thing it's not it's sexy because I'm there my sexy physique my big fat smelly belly <laughs> smelly belly floating <laughs> floating on top of the water <laughs> like a little mountain oh. you know actually talk about me being so fat that I am being so big bellied do you know why I like walking it's true this I like walking I figured out what it was I figured out the other day I was walking through the park and I realised one of the reasons I like walking is because it's the only time I get to see my feet because they're walking in front of me if I'm standing up I can't see my feet over my belly the one good thing about being really really skinny or really slim skinny I used to I used to be skinny but I know it's not necessarily a good word to use and it was never used in a I never used it in a nice way towards myself because I was embarrassed by it yet I see people just as skinny as I was walking around the town walking around in the summer with their tops off and I would have been so embarrassed to do that that would have been that would have, oh I could never have done that it was bad it was hard enough because when I was what was I 17 yeah, I had a little period where I went onto the beach where I lived in the, in the summer. And for some, some reason, I don't know why, I did find quite a secluded place, but there were still people there. And see, I'm not a sun person, and I will burn, and I did burn. It's just standing, it's my skin, it burns. And the amount of people over the years that say, no, but if you keep sunbathing, if you do a little bit of a time, it won't, it, it, I burn. That's it. Everyone seems to know better, don't they? You notice that. I've lived inside my skin most of my body. Most of my body, most of my life. I've had this skin, of, you know. And... I know it intimately. There's parts of my skin get itchy, get really itchy in the summer, you know? It's, I know my skin. I know what parts get cold. I know what parts, maybe it's, maybe the bits that get cold are a bit thinner. You know, it's not, they're not, got as thick skinned in that bits but I know my body and I think sure we all do not know my body I'm sure some of you would like to <laughs> you're falling in love with the weird or with the soft gentle voice and you know that if you met him you'd want to run away Lo, 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 lo. I can't believe I'm singing. It's supposed to be a sleep session. What I like is a massage. So you can do all these different things. Reflexology. Oh, I love reflexology. But I can't afford these things. But I'll tell you something. As soon as I can... I will be getting them. As soon as I've got an income, like a decent income, I'll be getting a massage at least once a week. 
I'll get I have reflexology. I'll have Indian head massage. I'll have aromatherapy. I'll have everything. I love all that stuff. But a massage. I used to go to a massage parlour. And it wasn't a massage parlour. Like a... a like a wonderful place to go it was just a normal um, massage it wasn't a massage parlour it, it was a health spa actually and I used to go there for a period of time I went there every week or two weeks because I was having muscular problems with my back because basically what happened is in 1990 I'd say probably 95 yeah probably that would make sense about 95 1995 I was I was doing lots of agency work and I had one job that I went to and it was putting in the furniture, loading the furniture or unloading the furniture from the lorries and then carrying them up to the different flats, it's like rooms. So it's basically a student accommodation. So each room had a bed, a wardrobe and a desk, I think that I think that was about it. And so everything was kind of wrapped up in bubble wrap or whatever. But you know, so but it was snowing. It was very cold and it was snowing. And I think basically, because I was used to just carrying stuff, it wasn't none of the stuff was too heavy for me. And we were doing it in twos, you know, we were like help carrying it with each other, two people each. But I got this, uh, so basically it was, I don't know, I might have had a roll of some kind, I don't mean in the snow. Uh, I had like some food, because I think they had a canteen, because it was a building site. And they just literally just finished building the block. But they were still building some other stuff there. And, uh, and I had that. It was like this poor cabin. And I had a cup of coffee or something. Yes, yeah, the memory's coming back. I haven't thought about this in absolutely years. And so I went outside... And because of the nature of the job, I couldn't be wearing jackets and coats. So basically, because you were physically active, uh, but also if you're wearing a coat, it's very restrictive. It's good for keeping you warm, but it's not, if you're moving around and carrying stuff, it's not so great. Well, for me anyway. So I left the coat off and I just probably put some gloves on or something anyway the, f the first thing I moved I think it was a, a desk and they were the heaviest bits wardrobes were rel relatively light because mainly just air isn't it you think the inside is nothing inside a wardrobe until there is of course and the beds were light they came in do bits anyway but the desks they were heavy so I picked I went over I was, someone else got over the other side and I picked up a, a table off the floor and my back ripped I heard it I could actually feel it and hear it it was strange 
just like near the the top ish of my back. Not the top like the neck, but kind of down. Um, even with my nipple, I would say, but the other side, obviously, my back, not my breast area, but my back. And straight away, it was like ah, uh, you know, really, really hurt. But um, I put it down probably. I didn't warm up, and it was you know, and it was cold, and I took my jacket off, so it's. And perhaps I didn't lift it correctly as well. And I was kneeling down on the floor trying to recover. Uh, I'm making this next bit up, but I think the person in charge says if you go home, you won't get paid. You know, there's back then it was no uh, oh accident at work. Yeah, you know, let's let, you know, let's look after him so he doesn't go to a claim organisation. No one cared back then, and there was wasn't, wasn't much in a way of protection for employees because I was just agency worker, so they didn't wasn't even a proper employee to then. And so I decided to work through it and I carried on and spent the rest of the day loading, unloading lorries and then loading up, carrying up these various different bits of furniture to the various rooms. And it's, I don't know how big, it was big, but I don't know how many rooms. A hundred or so, maybe I'm not sure. And uh, so that kind of injury stayed with me. It subsided, but it niggled me for years. So I think in 1998, I started going to the. Um, that place the health spa and getting a massage and just telling them basically it was specifically for that part for the uh, left hand side of my back in the middle and just that needed the most attention and apparently it's scarred she could said she could feel the scar inside the you know where it ripped or torn or whatever and uh it's the only thing really that used to help to relieve it apart from rubbing up against a do you know like a a door frame even now it it comes and it sort of I can feel it sometimes what I need to do is press myself against a door frame and just massage that area and it works it does it's because the thing is you say well that's wood that's that's pointy pointy-ish wood on a door frame it's not how would that be pleasurable but it's not about pleasure but at the same time I control the pressure, don't I? It's not like it's a door frame like leaning on me saying, oh, get this bloke back for all those stupid long boring stories we have to listen to him you know, stuck in this door frame. Uh and what the earth was uh Tom Jones talks like that now, doesn't he? Uh oh hey 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 Tom Jones I remember when he when he surprised the world when was it 10 years ago 
when he was in his 70s he surprised the world by basically turning up with grey hair all this time we all believed that he had jet black jet black hair even darker than it was when he was in his 20s his hair got blacker and darker which in itself is pretty cool feeling really relaxed it's nice and calm in here It's a little bit chilly when I woke up, so I turned the heating on. Just to take the edge off. Still got most of the windows open.
there's practically zero going on in my mind right now. <laughs>